Hi, this is Joel Persinger. I'm the Gun Guy. Thank you very much for all of your support uh, with Gun Guy TV, and thank you very much for watching my videos. Without you, I'd be just talking to myself, so I'm grateful that you watch the videos. Thank you very much for doing so. By the way, if you don't want to watch them on YouTube, remember, we are no longer prisoners of YouTube. You can find Gun Guy TV on all of these platforms as well. Some of them may not have all of the videos, but we're working on getting the entire channel copied on all of these platforms. So if you discover that you go to one and maybe one or two or maybe ten of the videos are missing, don't worry. We would get them all there. We're working on it as quickly as we can. And please go to one of those places and subscribe or follow just in case something happens to us on YouTube, you'll know where we are and what's going on. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is if you don't have concealed carry insurance or uh, firearms insurance for home defense or something, check out Second Call Defense. They are a sponsor of Gun Guy TV now. They didn't used to be, but they are now. And I've been talking about them since long before they ever gave us any kind of, of uh, sponsorship. I use them myself. You should check them out. The link is in the description. If you decide to choose Second Call Defense as your concealed carry insurance, please use our link. It does benefit us a little bit and help Gun Guy TV stay alive. It keeps us afloat. And when you do that, it really helps a lot. All right, what I wanted to talk to you about today was this Crimson Trace laser guard setup for my Smith & Wesson M&P shield. Now, the M&P shield is an extremely popular handgun, and there's a great reason for it, because it is a terrific gun. Smith & Wesson really got it right when they built this little pistol. I bought it as an option to carry in addition to my Taurus Model 85 revolver that I carry a lot. And I find that I carry this one most of the time if I'm carrying something in a strong side hip holster. And Optics Planet was kind enough to send me this laser guard set up for my uh, M&P shield because I wanted to try it out. I got to tell you, I like it a lot. I, I, one of the things I like about these is I like the fact that it's instinctive. The minute you get the grip, the laser comes on. And you don't have to think about it. There's no switch to flip. There's nothing you have to do other than get the gun in play. And once the gun is in play, the laser's on. I, I prefer that because I know I'm going to forget to flip the switch or whatever the case might be. Uh, but I do have one issue with this that I'll tell you at the end of the video. One thing I don't like about it that they could improve and it didn't, that it does exist on my Crimson Trace laser grips. Other than that, I found it, I've carried it for quite a while now. And I've used them a lot for several months, actually. And I've shot it, uh, I've gone to the range and fired it a lot and practiced with it a lot. And I really, really do like this setup. It, I, in fact, I like everything about it except the one thing I'm going to tell you in a minute. Uh, I like the ergonomics. I like the fact that it looks cool. There is an issue in the fact that there, you, you kind of have to hunt for holsters that, that you like that will accommodate it. And I couldn't find one I really, really like. There's a bunch of them, but I'm not a Kydex holster guy. I'm still, an, I'm an old dude. I still like leather holsters. So I, I contacted George at GB Holsters and he actually built this holster for me along with the mag pouch. And I really like it. And I did review these and talk about these in another video. So you can check that out if you like. All right, there are a few things about um, lasers I want to talk about because some people will poo-poo them and I get it. But I think there's some great reasons for them, particularly for civilians. First of all, if you're a civilian, there's no requirement for you to be in a certain physical condition or be able to see well or have a certain age in an age group like there is in the military or law enforcement. You're just a civilian, and your Second Amendment right allows you to have a firearm with which to defend yourself, which means if we are a person that has poor vision naturally, we may not be able to effectively see the sights. If we're getting older, like me, at some point or other, your vision degrades and you can't effectively see the sights. I have many students who will come to practice and they're looking through their reading glasses trying to see the sights. Well, if that's you and you're trying to defend yourself with the handgun and you, can't, you have to do that to see the sights, you're in deep trouble. Well, this is where a laser can help because you won't be able to see the sights, but you certainly can see the laser dot. So it allows you a way to, to aim the pistol using a different tool rather than the irons to be able to get the pistol on target very quickly and defend yourself if you happen to be a person with for, poor vision or degrading vision. Uh, likewise, it also helps you extend something that we can do naturally. Now, most of these contests, if you're in a shootout to defend yourself as a civilian, most of these things, frankly, happen at bad breath distance, to be honest with you. And if that's the case, you don't need sights at all. Point the gun, press the trigger, you're going to hit the bad guy. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It's simple point shooting. Uh, you focus on the target, not on the sights. You point like you would. You point your finger and you press the trigger. As long as your trigger press is good, the bullet's going to go where you want it to go, up close and personal, within four, five, six, seven yards, maybe, probably four, five, six yards for most people. Beyond that, it gets a little sketchy. 
but you can do it. However, it is a skill that needs to be practiced. So you got to go to the range and practice that so that you can do it in emergency and, and not jerk the gun and drive the rounds underneath the bad guy or underneath the target. So you still have to have a good trigger press, but point shooting works very well. Here's what a laser does. It allows you to extend the distance at which point shooting will work effectively. For most people, point shooting is going to work in distances measured in feet and maybe a little bit in short, very, very short yardage. But you put a laser on here. Now if I point the gun, I can adjust a little bit and adjust my point because I see where the dot is. And that allows me to use point shooting skills and use them out, in some cases, out to 7 yards, 10 yards, maybe even 15 yards, I can get the rounds on target with that laser where I couldn't otherwise. And if that's what you need, then you get a green laser because you can see it clearly during the day. It's very, very bright, and even in bright sunlight, you're going to be able to do that most of the time. Now, the red lasers, not so much, but the green ones tend to be brighter and tend to be able to, to be seen during the day a little better. It allows you to extend that distance out for your point shooting, and particularly if you're a person with poor eyesight where you, 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 you can't see up close, you just can't make out the sights, that allows you a, a way to get the, type, the, uh, the gun on target and defend yourself. Now, lastly, obviously, at night, um, you know, this gun I could put tritium night sights on if I want to, and I think I'm going to so I can see the sights at night. But my snubby revolver, I can't. The, the, the rear sight is just part of the top strap. I mean, it was very expensive to have that drilled and put, uh, you know, tritium in. And, you know, it's more than I have trouble that I want to go to. So, frankly, having a laser on there when I've got my snubby with me at night is very effective because I cannot easily make out the sights. And when you're in a gunfight, I, I would imagine you don't have the time to do that. These things happen in very, very short intervals of time, two, three seconds, and you just, it's over, it's done. So you don't have time to be hunting for the sights. That's where a laser is positive as well. Now, there's one other area where a laser is a big deal, and that is if you're behind cover and you need to reach around something to shoot. I wanted to demonstrate that for you, which is why I went to the range and I did it. I, I stood in one lane and reached my hand around where I could not see the pistol at all, and at seven yards, which is where I put the target, six or seven yards, I was able to keep the rounds right in the middle. In fact, a few of them I actually got really, really solid bullseyes with. The other ones I, I jerked the trigger a little bit, but I kept them right on target without being able to see the gun at all. I actually had the wall in between me and the gun, and I was still able to keep the, the rounds on target. Well, that simulates being, you know, bending, being underneath a piece of cover and shooting around it, or being behind an engine block and kind of shooting around it where I can peek around and actually see the bad guy, or being in a crowded building where I'm hiding behind a piece of furniture trying to use concealment, but now I have an opportunity to shoot, but I don't want to put my head over the top to do it. This is a way that I can index the gun on target and I can sight it on target without necessarily having to have my bean behind the gun where it's exposed. That to me is one of the greatest advantages of lasers. So I, you know, I urge you to check them out. This one is a really good setup. Now the other thing I want to mention to you too is there are lots of people will say, well, yeah, but what when the batteries die? What about when the batteries die? You know, the same people that say that are the ones that have battery op operated optics on their rifle and don't whine about it. They're the same people that will complain about a polymer pistol but they're, they're, or an aluminum pistol because it's got to be all steel, but they're AR-15 lovers, <laughs> right? I mean, it's just nonsense. They're the same people who probably would have complained a hundred years ago when all of a sudden somebody invented the horseless carriage and they would have said, well, that newfangled thing's ridiculous. I'll just ride my horse. Well, how many people are riding horses around the United States today? So that's, that's a ridiculous argument. If that bothers you, buy some extra batteries and swap the batteries once out every six months and the battery's not going to die on you. And sure, if you can see the sights, you should practice with irons in case it does. But a lot of folks, civilians, some of them can't see the sights at all. You might as well knock them off the gun. They can't see them and they're unusable. If that's the case, get yourself a laser. And if you're, sure, if you're carrying a little gun like this, whether it's the M&P Shield or the Glock 43 or 42 or a little gun like that, I, I'm pretty sure they make this laser guard for all of those. They certainly do for the shield. And of all of the laser options I've found for the shield, this is absolutely my favorite because it's the one that has the little button right here. I get the grip, boom, there's the laser. I don't have to think about it. It's completely instinctive. And there are a lot of holsters available for it. I just didn't like any of them. So I, you know, I, 
I plunked down the dough and had one made. Now here's the one issue I told you I didn't like about it, and that is that on this particular model there's no way to, there's no switch to turn the laser off. On my laser grips on my snubby I can reach underneath and turn the laser off. On this one I can't, it's on all the time. There's nothing you can do about it. The only way you can not use the laser, laser is lighten up your grip, which is fine. But there are times when I want to practice shooting without the laser and I'd like to be able to turn it off. Well, I can't. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's a minor thing, but it's a thing. So I want to let you know that you can't turn the laser off on the Crimson Trace laser guard for your M&P shield. But other than that, the darn thing is stellar. It looks like it's actually was designed to be part of the gun. Uh, and it, it works brilliantly. I'm very, very pleased with it. And I'm very grateful for Optics Planet sending it to me. So check it out on Optics Planet. You can get them there. The links are in the description unless you're on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you will not find the links in the description. However, I did find out, I think, that I can put them in the, um, in the comments and then pin the comment to the top. So that's what I'm going to do on YouTube. So if you're looking for the links, that's where you'll find those pinned in the comments uh, at the top. I cannot put product product links in the description. YouTube won't allow it. Everywhere else you'll find them in the description. So there you go. The Crimson Trace Laser Guard for your M&P Shield. Check it out. It is awesome. You can get them right there at Optics Planet. Thank you again for watching. Have a wonderful week. And don't forget to vote. Don't forget to register. This midterm, we cannot stay home. you got to get to the voting booth and you got to vote. Uh, if we're going to save our Second Amendment, we're going to uh, save the uh, United States Congress and the United States House. We've got to keep them in Second Amendment friendly hands. And wherever you are in your state, make sure you vote. And if you're in California, please vote for John Cox. We cannot let Gavin Newsom become governor. Thank you again. I know I got political there at the end. Have a great week. Be safe.